Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do something completely different. I'm going to do some roses through a white picket fence. I think maybe some golden sunset colors would look nice too. If this is something that you're looking forward to seeing, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I've got a basic sketch. This was done just very quickly with a pencil, just because I didn't really feel like doing this much with the brush. I wanted to, to make sure I dialed in all my little lines. As you can see, I kind of changed things around just a little. This is obviously a fence here, uh, some rose bushes, maybe a little building in the back, maybe not, we'll see. All right, <laughs> I don't know. Let's just, let's play around with it and see what happens. Let's paint, let's paint the background first, I guess. You could paint the fence post first or the background. It doesn't actually make any difference. Oh, this is gonna be, a uh, little yellow ochre, because this is going to be sunset. And I think we're going to have some beautiful little colors in this one. Now I'm going to do my, oh, there's no medium on here at all. I'm just going to put a little bit of clear gel, just mix it in with my paint as I go here in the background, maybe about 10% clear gel. This is a little bit different from, from the way I normally paint, but it's not a lot different. Oh, by the way, we should actually be, we should have looked at the paintings that you guys did on my last one. I like the Filbert brush because it kind of gives me those pretty soft edges, you know, with, without too much trouble. If you use something like the three quarter flat brush, which we will be doing probably later, uh, it gives you more of a sharp edge, which is okay. I'm not going to drive myself crazy painting around these fence posts, but I am going to be just slightly careful, just slightly, <laughs> not too careful. There. Now, that's a building. Maybe we won't go too crazy up here toward the building. There. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We may do a sky there. I don't know. I haven't really figured that part out yet. Let's get just a little more color happening. Now you can put on as much paint as you want because you can always wipe it off with a shop towel. So now I've changed to the one inch brush. And that's because I'm going to try look at the little fence post that we can see here, but mostly overgrown. I'm going to try to get kind of a different colored bush or just something along those lines <laughs> right here, uh, just to change it a bit. Now this bush here is still foreground stuff, but I think this might be background. Like I said, maybe a sky. I don't know. Don't fully know yet, but the one inch brush is going to help, I think, get just a little more a little more interest to the bush area. Since we're not painting around the fence posts, I think maybe there is a fence post, you know, buried, very much buried in here. I don't know if you'll really be able to see it much. I don't even know, who knows, who cares? Let's just throw it in and cross our fingers. <laughs> there. Get some of that filled in. Good, I did my best to leave some areas where we could have some roses popping over the fence. I think that would look really nice. This is gonna to have to be filled way in. I don't even know if it's, I don't even know if this one's good or not. We might just, we might just cover him up mostly. Yeah, that looks better. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's the fun about this painting. You see how I'm scrubbing it on really dry. That's the fun about this. Just kind of let it, oh, I shouldn't really go down this road, but just kind of let it happen and see what, and see what happens, right? That's okay sometimes, into a very limited degree, right? because I do know where I'm going, but I also want to be surprised. <laughs> Just a little, no big surprises, only small surprises. So now I'm really painting in a sky with, <laughs> with my Filbert brush. Um, it's kind of pretty. It's kind of pretty to have just a little, uh, like I said, maybe sunset, sunrise, something going on in here. Just something different, <laughs> something, something, something. Uh, I should come up with some, some different words to say. Uh, here's some blue, some red. See that? Just get us a nice purpley blue. Oh, that's pretty. I like that with a filbert brush. It fits the painting. You know, I don't know that I've really done a lot of filbert brush skies before have we done any, but it works. Fits. There. I'm gonna leave it fairly rough, I think, because why not? Wipe that brush out really, really good. Should have done this actually a moment ago. Uh, don't do this with a paper towel. <laughs> do it with a shop towel. My shop towels are just out of reach and I don't wanna walk over and get them, but there, just rub that off. I wasn't going very far. And maybe grab a little, a little more white, a little yellow. 
a little touch of our red. I'm just trying to create a little more sunset. Oh, there it is, right back here. I have a little tinge of green in it, but I don't think that bothers me. I'll put a little more red to counteract it, and we'll pretend, watch this, <laughs> we'll pretend like we meant to do that. There it is. Very nice. That may be just a little more. You can play around with the sky as much as you want, or as little as you want, honestly, because it is just right back here. But a little sky showing from behind the house. Maybe bring it down just a little. Okay, good. Now, here's my thought. Let's go ahead and grab back to our greens and that wanted to sneak into the sky. And let's place right here, especially around this house, just a little bush or something. Just something that feels like, like it's got a little interest to it, but fairly blurry in the background. That's the way we'll create some depth, very soft in the background. Good. Does it look like an absolute mess? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I think that's okay. I think that's the direction we need to be headed in order to make this painting work. You must have sharp and soft areas in a close-up painting. That's what this is, a close-up painting. And then maybe just a touch darker right here. Now, before we go a whole lot further, it'd be a great idea to go ahead and get our our house are building in. I guess if it turns out good, it'll be a house. If it turns out bad, <laughs> it can be like a barn. <laughs> oh boy. They're kind of fairly, fairly mushy, fairly smooth, kind of just there, you know, just there. How about we put a little paint on, on the actual siding? I don't want purple, but I think maybe like a blue, because but then, of course, that blue would have a little red touch. Okay, right there. I like that. That could be good. We can always fix it if we don't care for it. But It's just, you know, you could paint your house literally any color. Because, you know, houses are any color. But I think for this painting, the blue will work well with the colors that we have going on. It's perfectly, perfectly acceptable for it to hit these greens and whatnot because the greens would be reflected off this building. If you ever look at a picture, just look in, in person of a building with something next to it, those colors are always reflected on it. Very interesting, isn't it? A little red just again to add shadows or whatnot. The light today, although this is kind of recessed back here so it doesn't really matter, but the light today is, I, at least right now I'm thinking, is coming in Kind of, kind of like this. No, is it? Or we should go like that. This like this. I already have it planned in my mind. It's just a matter of getting it from my mind to the canvas. That's the hard part. I think it's coming like this because I think I want my shadows across. And I thought about doing backlight, but I don't think so. That's why you don't want that sunset too bright as well. Because if you have that sunset too bright, it's, it'll seem like maybe the light. Maybe we could do the light coming this way. It doesn't really matter. I may change my mind, and that's a good thing. I want to take you along for the ride. You can change your mind as you paint. You don't have to just make it cookie cutter or just exactly the way you planned. You know what I mean? You've got all kinds of opportunities to change and adjust your painting, and you should be taking them making it exactly how you want, no matter how many times you have to mess around with it. Now let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's pretty decent. I didn't leave these on very long, maybe, hmm, maybe a couple minutes, but I might, I might have to do more later. I can't help but I'm in a rush. I want to see what this painting looks like. <laughs> I'm going to place on now just, uh, while I was waiting, I mixed up a color, just a kind of a peach color, something that feels like it might work as far as what a white fence would be reflecting during a sunset. You would not want to paint this everywhere. You just paint this around here and there. See how I'm just skipping spots? Oh, that's important. This does a couple of things. It, it gives us a little variation, and it also really just helps to sell the, the more like sunset effect. It's not really perfectly a sunset painting, but you know what I mean. We're just trying to sell that effect. Oh, forgot these boards are behind. Those support boards are behind. That's good. I still haven't figured out what I'm doing here, and I don't care. <laughs> you know, it just isn't that important. 
We'll figure it out later. Figure it out here in a minute. There, okay, that's probably enough of that color. Uh, let's see here. A little more just yellow and white. Let's see what that does for, oh, that's pretty. See, the only color you don't want to use <laughs> is white. Imagine that. Oh yes, don't you just love painting? Oh, that, that works. Now, as you smooth it out, you know, it becomes a little, a little better. Any areas like right here where it goes out and then in and that, <laughs> wow, that's thick, that you don't want it to be doing that, put a leaf over it and call it good. There, perfection is not the goal today. Just the overall effect, and then we'll dial it in. Sloppy at the beginning, and then more detailed, and a little tighter, and a little nicer <laughs> toward the end. Ooh, I got a little blue in there. That's okay, I wouldn't wanna do that too much, but a little won't hurt. I'm certainly not gonna stress out about it. Oh yeah, golden color, so pretty. All right, we're gonna do a lot of the same stuff here until these fence posts are painted in. Then we'll make them look pretty, because right now they look horrible, and you're probably about ready to click on. Don't click on! <laughs> uh, just wait here a minute longer, and we'll have this dialed in. Hopefully you've already seen the thumbnail. Now I've got the three-quarter brush. You could just, you could do this with a, a quarter-inch brush if you want to, but I think I'm going to keep mine clean for the details. That's, that's the thought. But anyway, with the three-quarter brush, I don't know why I get sidetracked and distracted. I'm just trying to mix up a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, rose color, but one that's very much got a lot of orange in it. That will play well with these with these colors. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. As you can see, I spent just a moment with a shop towel, just kind of cleaning off areas where I maybe want some roses. I don't have to stick with those. I, I can kind of play around with in, within those areas or, you know, don't have to do them all. I could do more, that's what I'm trying to say. But it gives me a place to start. <laughs> it gives me a place to start, that's a good thing. Here we go. And it's okay to have a lot of fun when you paint. Sometimes we gotta remind ourselves this is for fun, this is not, <laughs> this is nothing, no other reason, right? And don't be too hard on yourself when it comes to painting. Just enjoy the process. Whether or not it turns out exactly as you hoped is irrelevant. Ooh, this is good stuff. Because each time you paint, you will get better. It does not have to work out perfectly for you in order for you to learn and, and do better next time and just enjoy the process. <laughs> Look at me, I'm painting these random roses on a fence. This is not what I normally do. May not turn out perfectly. Probably won't turn out exactly like I imagine it. It'll probably be different, and I'm okay with that. There, look at that. Uh, maybe a little more dark red, even a little touch of our umber in that red. I know that seems a little weird. <laughs> it's just because it is a little weird, but I think it works. It just helps to add in a feeling of a darker flower. Okay, don't go too crazy. We'll definitely be wiping those off with a paper towel. Wipe. Speaking of wiping, let me get the paint off of the brush so I can go back into my brighter tones. Okay, there, that's pretty. Right, right there. A little bit of a rose there, there. <laughs> you can pretty much plop them anywhere you feel like they would fit. A little larger here, because this is a closer fence. Yeah, a little larger, and I'll, I'll connect. Ooh, I like that. It just kind of looks like a petal. Maybe I won't do that there. Maybe I'll leave that right where it is. Let's see. <laughs> right, right there. Put one right in that dark spot. I like that. Uh, maybe one right here. Okay, starting to starting to get a nice feel. Maybe. Ooh, we kind of need a, just a darker one right back up in here. They don't look much like roses now, but they will later, I hope. <laughs> now over here, you could wipe the canvas or you could just, honestly, I'm just gonna start putting them on. I've already kind of wiped this area off once, as you recall. We absorbed some of that paint. So it sticks fairly easily. These are smaller and I'll probably wipe these <laughs> before I highlight. But that at least gets us established with a beautiful rose bush. And this, these don't all have to be roses. They could be whatever you want them to be. There, there, I'm just kind of adding in some purple shadows. There's my purple right there. It makes a difference, I kind of like it. They they definitely need shadows here 
under the roses, but the other thing it, it needs is just random shadows, you know? Just, it's okay to get a little of that rose color and sprinkle it in. I think that helps to tie everything together. But see, just like random shadows here that are not from roses, they're just from something. Helps it to look more natural. Because you would see that, you would see these shadows extend over the fence like this. Now, they don't have to be perfect, and I've got so much paint on there, but it's kind of on purpose. I want it to be a little globby. I don't think we'll make mud, but you see it's extremely globby, much more than normal for me. And that's just, that's to kind of build up that oil paint look, almost an impressionistic globbiness <laughs> that I think works with a painting like this. I'm just trying something a tad bit different. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. I'm gonna wipe out this, I'm, my uh, quarter flat brush, quarter inch flat, and I'm gonna grab some of our red, and I'd like to make kind of a shadow. That would be the next the next thing to do. Kind of a more dark, was really, it's a purple again. <laughs> it's a good shadow color. But this time I'm going right here on these roses. Actually, that's, uh, eh, not super pleased. Let's get a little umber in that as well. And a little black. Oh, there we go. That's better. More of a deep red tone instead of the purple. Okay, good. So you see, we'll just mark out our the centers of the roses. This is actually two roses, so there's a center right there. Not too much paint <laughs> on the roses because we have to highlight. We can certainly glob up the highlight, but you don't want to glob up the underpainting. It just won't work. I don't know what's going on there. We may need to shrink that one. It's kind of pretty, isn't it? What's nice about them being this small is they don't have to be perfect. They can just be a little bit more of a suggestion of the rose. <laughs> and then, you know, make, make a couple of them up here a little better. It's like that one. Maybe I'll spend a little more time on, give them a, a proper rose shape as you see right there. I think impressionistic swishy <laughs> brush strokes gonna be your friend here today. Just gonna make it smoother. It's gonna make things go smoother, that is. <laughs> and I think you're gonna have more fun. At least I think I'm gonna have more fun if I do it that way. Versus trying to be too tight on this one. Okay, that looks good though. <laughs> Maybe a little more red and the darker reds up in here just to help promote that feeling of those roses kind of more in the shadow areas of a little detail. Just like that. Oh, yeah, that's it. See, that just a few strokes promotes all that detail and that'll be covered by leaves as well. A lot of leaves coming too. Oh, we almost, we almost have enough room here to actually make another proper rose. Let's do that. That's maybe the most challenging part of the painting for me, which is highlighting the roses. There, getting the shapes dialed in the way that I want them. I want them to feel natural, you know? I don't want to be too far outside of the, the natural rose look, whatever you would, whatever you would call that. I want it to look very real, but yet impressionistic with some, a bit of globby brush strokes. But in a good, in a good way, <laughs> in a good place, you know. I guess that's the thing about when you do things that are a little bit more, I don't know, like just hit it and leave it. As long as you put the paint in the right spot, it looks amazing. There. Of course, we're going to put leaves over these, so these are not as crazy as you know, like a full-on rose painting. This is more of the scene. Roses are just a part of the scene. Now, I'm working with a bunch of different colors here. I've got a big old mix here of just super bright red or deep red. I've got some like orangey happening. And I'm going to be using a lot of different colors here because that's what's going to help to make this look more interesting. There. And it's okay to kind of, <laughs> it's okay to have a mistake and then just ignore it because we can, like I said, we can cover it, you know? It's not, not necessary to make this perfect. What a waste of, what a waste of our valuable painting time trying to sit there and make it perfect. There. Okay, maybe just 
little here. Remember, if this gets too muddy, you can stop and, and wipe this off with a shop towel and get it just right, and you won't have any trouble with mud. <laughs> so that is definitely worth keeping in mind that you can do that. So far, so good. Put it on thick if you need to. You can also use a detail round. I just think that this little quarter inch brush is perfect because the three quarter inch brush is really good for roses. And so, of course, this one would be as well. Nice. What do you think? Maybe just, oh, that's almost too much paint. <laughs> kind of going crazy. Maybe just a little a sparkle of yellow. We do need those yellows because this is sunset. But if you do too much, it might not be good. <laughs> so we'll just be cautious with it. It's kind of pretty. Maybe we'll make that into like three roses. I don't know. There, something like that. Just with a few strokes, you can get it looking pretty, pretty decent. <laughs> Remember, our light's coming across like this. So it matters where you're putting these little chunks. It's pretty though. I think I'm, I think I'm starting to get, kind of get the hang of it. <laughs> there. More just swift dabbles. You know, be a little more, uh, that's what's helping me right now. Be a little more decisive. See that? The decisive flowers are, are looking better than the non-decisive flowers. Get up here. Let's try this again. Be a little more decisive. Oh, there we go. Boy, that makes a difference. Have a little confidence. <laughs> That's as much for me as it is for you because I'm not a master rose painter by any means. But I do my best to kind of look at the shapes of things. That's how I get through stuff like this. I do have some lessons on roses if you're interested in that. You kind of get an idea of how I plan out a rose, which is probably different than <laughs> the way a lot of other people would just because my style. But there you go. I think it's cool. I don't know that there's any right or wrong way to do this. Mm. All right. Well, I'm going to spend a few more minutes on this, but not not a ton of time. I think I'm to a point where I can live with these roses. They're not perfect, not in any way, but we can come back and tweak them toward the end of the painting. I don't want to spend too much time on them until I know which ones are going to be seen and which ones aren't <laughs> as I smooth that one out. OK, I think. I think we should just stop. Somebody stop me. <laughs> I think we should just not keep messing with that at all. Okay, so tell you what, let's go ahead and get right here with a little bit more of our, a little bit more of our kind of green and yellow colors, similar to what we had going on in the background, but this time maybe a little more green. I don't know. At this point, you can kind of do whatever you want, just as long as it's matching the painting. A little more green is good. Remember, this is supposed to be sunset color, so don't go too vibrant with the with like the bluish green cast, you know. OK, so pretty much all we're going to do is locate a few larger stems that maybe we can see some of them are coming down from the top. You don't have to. Of course, you don't have to do this perfect, but I'm just going to do a few of them more accurately than not just for the sake of, of doing it, you know, and then I can speed through the rest of them. Kind of just for, just for fun to give it a different effect. Okay, that works. You know, it <laughs> doesn't have to be in any way, in any way, perfect. You don't have to stress out about this. Let's see there, okay. <laughs> uh. Let's get in here and start figuring out our leaves. Oh, look at that instant highlight when you hit that fence because the white that is picked up. Nice. Now we'll probably come in through here and paint in some more darks as well. So just keep that in mind. Oh, that's pretty. Don't overdo. This is supposed to be it's supposed to be fairly close, so keep these leaves more separated. Just like that, pretty much. I think I'm going to try to copy that across the entire area here. Some areas are lighter, obviously in the middle should be quite a bit lighter. And then toward the edges, 
when we get a little darker, a little more of our sap green in the mix, we'll do that pretty well. See that? Good. <laughs> Quick and easy with this brush. You could certainly do it with a detail round as well. That would be just as good. So just whatever you've got on hand, it'll be fine. You can even use the corner of the three quarter brush, which I've done before for stuff like this. Works out great. So you've got all sorts of options in order to make this look good. All right, is anybody here freaking out? <laughs> uh, yeah, what did I do with my roses? Well, I stood back and I looked and I was not happy. I was not happy with, um, it was too busy. It was too busy. So, I took the roses off the fence <laughs> and completely out, actually, with the help of the palette knife. Oh, that was interesting. You should have seen <laughs> scraping off the, ooh, okay, yeah, but we got through that part. <laughs> And then I took a shop towel and just getting rid of the rest of it, you know, because it didn't really matter. I don't think it's going to affect anything. Yeah, except it's going to look better in the end. That's what it's going to affect. Let me grab my, let me grab my palette. And we'll just repaint the fence post. If I, you know, if I would have skipped this step, I might have saved a minute or two, but the end product is going to be something that I'm happy with by making the composition better. It's just too many roses, you know? And that's what happens when you try to plan out a painting like this. Things happen, things change. I mean, I haven't, I have not pre-planned where my roses are going at all. There. That looks pretty good. I guess I had some sketch, but <laughs> I guess I, so maybe I did have a few pre-planned. Well, I, I certainly left that a long time ago. <laughs> but that, what is that, five minutes? And I got my fence post back just the way it was? Good. I can wrap my leaves around it, but I don't want there to be too much. Um, I don't want there to be too much busyness. I want a little openness. We have roses and then more roses, but it just, as a contrast, you know, because otherwise it was just looking too busy and I was not thinking that it was balanced. So we just helped the painting get a little more balanced. And, and to me, that was well worth it. Well, well worth it. <laughs> well worth that little bit of risk. It was just a little, not too much. All right, a quick purple going right down the side and we should be right back where we were. I'll go back to painting my leaves. Nice. All right, back to our Back to a little brush here, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint leaves. I like that little, the orange that's left back in there, that pink and orange. Let's leave it. it looks like little roses in the background. Now, I'm not going to go too busy, but I do need to push these back into the painting, or they won't look right. So I will have to add just a few leaves to them. But I like that. <laughs> that was a quick and easy fix. Glad you got to see it. Now we finally get to work on something familiar, some grass. I know how to paint grass. <laughs> I actually took off so much of the, the paint that I've got to put some dark paint back on. What a great problem to have, isn't it? The canvas is so stained, none of that light color is going to come off. But hey, if some of it shows through, that's completely fine. I look good. Go ahead and make sure we have... Well, you know, we're going to pull up liner brush grass and other bits and pieces, like maybe some more flowers. But it doesn't hurt to go ahead and get started here. Yeah, just using the top of the brush. It's about all it takes. You don't have to, like I said, don't have to do it solid. Now, we haven't really talked about this area much here, but I think, you see the fence kind of stops here. I think maybe the fence goes back that way, or this is just where the fence starts. I don't know, and I don't care, but I just think it works just like it is. I like it, so I don't want to mess with it, but you could change your fence, you know, to go all the way across if you'd rather. I just think for the, for the sake of the painting, I think that this works. Maybe could add one more fence post. I'm not too sure. Not too sure. And we'll figure that out more toward the end. I want to see what this grass looks like. Now let's paint on some little like purple or pink flowers here. I think it's going to add to the overall effect of the painting quite a bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Comes together, really starts to shine. And I think it's just overall nice looking. <laughs> That's a good way to describe a painting. Overall, nice looking. Yeah. There, 
you know what? I say it every week and I'm going to say it again this week. <laughs> it's okay to be okay. It's okay to be happy. I can't, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of painting flowers and I'm messing everything up. But that's okay. Having fun. Anyways, it's okay to be happy with the painting, even if it's not perfect. I say it all the time, but it's true. There. Hmm. There are just a couple of dabs. It doesn't take a whole lot, you know? And again, if you have little issues, we'll be covering this with liner brush grass, so those issues will just become part of the painting. and It'll be really pretty and we can work with it and it doesn't matter. How about some purple or just something kind of happening there just to create something different on the edge. If you put a frame on it, it'll cover it. So we should probably bring it in just a little more. That's pretty. I don't even know what it is, but it's color. And I, I like to add those little dots of color. I think they, they really work. They're, they add something to the painting, you know? So add a couple more flowery bits there. Now remember, this is sunset, as I keep on saying. <laughs> uh, so you don't want to go crazy with that. We'll want to keep it a little darker, a little more contrast, because it is that sunset painting. You'll lose that effect altogether if you don't have enough contrast. Get some pink color happening, because you don't want them all the same. We want to add a little variety, especially here in the highlight. So add some pink. Okay. I have no idea what kind of flowers those are. I don't think it makes any difference at all. You know what would be kind of pretty? Should we do some blue? We don't want to do too much of a blue because that will look, again, not like a sunset or sunrise, but a splash of blue with a purple touch to it, you know, makes, makes a nice effect. Not too, too much, just a, a few kind of sprinkled in and throughout the grass. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, how about some white ones? See, at this point, you're just kind of dialing it in, adding what you want to your painting. No, not to, actually, no, no white ones, because sunset. <laughs> how about some light yellow ones? Nice. So if you didn't know, you really don't need to be adding any white pure white to anything that has a sunset color because your whites won't reflect, you know, things that are white, like a white flower or a white picket fence will not be reflecting that true color of white. It'll have that warm yellow in it. Of course, I mean, it makes sense, but there's something you have to think about just because it makes sense doesn't mean that once you get a brush in your hand, you won't completely forget. <laughs> Ask me how I know, but that's okay. Just a few dabs of that color and I think that's about all we need. Yeah, there we go. Nice. So pretty much at this point, just looking around, where do we need to add those details? Add maybe a little, just a glowing highlight on these purple flowers. I think that helps to pop them out a little. What do you think? There, I'm just finishing up adding in a fence post. I decided to go ahead and do it. That is it right there. Doesn't take much, very, very muted. And I think that works. Now, I haven't quite decided what to do with this area until now. What I'm doing is, I'm just, I should show you. I actually should grab a little more green. I'm just placing on some green kind of randomly just to finish any of these areas that look kind of too sloppy. And I want the outline here, like there's some light, I want to put the dark over it, I want that to look like leaves. So I'm kind of doing a comma stroke to make it look like a leaf. There, tightening it up, making it less sloppy and look more uh, purposeful, but yet still loose, if that makes sense. I do not want to lose, do not want to lose my looseness. But I do want it to look intentional. I don't want it to look sloppy. That doesn't make for uh, what I want, at least. Not, not what I want. So that helps tightening it up a little. I want it to look like, you know, like the viewer is going to know, hey, <laughs> this is what I meant it to look like. Not like, oh, you forgot to paint over there. <laughs> so you should maybe do the same if you're doing something similar. Just double check, make sure none of your brush strokes are too crazy. Maybe darken up this edge just a little. <laughs> this is basically dry. We wiped so much of that paint off. All I see is the tooth of the canvas here. I don't even see brush strokes. So you just, you can use just a little bit of paint and it's extremely thick over here. It's extremely sparing over here. So I think it actually makes for a very nice contrast between 
textures, you know, thicknesses of paint. That's cool. I think we can work with that. Kind of like those little umbers that happened here at the bottom. Didn't really do that intentionally, but it almost looks like dirt showing through. It's kind of pretty. Actually, could we could we do some more of that? That'd be kind of fun. Let's. <laughs> I didn't even didn't even plan this. This is just spur of the moment stuff. But let's just see if we can get a little more. I don't even know if this is going to be worth it, but I just want to like sprinkle in color that maybe feels like some dirt under here or just some some extra detail. We need that detail. You can't over detail something like this. At least I don't think you can. <laughs> there you should as long as you don't like just make mud, you should be able to just keep adding layer after layer of detail until you are satisfied. Then you should stop and lock it in. <laughs> you lock it in by by stopping. If, you ever, if you've ever taken an art class with me, I will tell you to put your brush down on the table when you're done with the step. <laughs> Several of you people are, are, are laughing because you know, because I've told you. <laughs> and it helps. It helps because then you can, you can lock it in and you won't mess up your painting that way. So as soon as you're happy, be sure you stop. But I like that. I think that just gives it a little more of a garden look. It looks like we're out in a, somebody planted this in their garden maybe, or in their front yard, something like that. Be kind of, be kind of a nice, Thing to have. I have a rose bush, but <laughs> it's not that pretty. Not that big. There. Maybe just a little action right there as well. But you get the idea. Oh, while well, we're over here, speaking of action, <laughs> I don't know how action has to do with this, but that's okay. Let's just add in a few, a few little petals and some stems. No, oh, that stem was a little thick. You can do them with the liner brush if you'd rather, but I just want to get a few of them on. So now it's time for the liner brush detail, and I'm very, very excited about it. I think it's going to help this foreground come together. I'm actually very pleased with kind of how that background shaped up after that fence post there especially. I feel like it's just, just about right. <laughs> there. Mm, I like that. Just. You know, we do this in landscape painting all the time. I guess this kind of is a landscape, but you know what I mean. We do this in regular painting all the time. Just touch touch in with the liner brush and get those instant leaves in the foreground. Yes, this will stick over any of it. So if you need to highlight, you want to highlight those roses again? Maybe we'll do that. We should do that. <laughs> if we want to give those roses an accent highlight, do it with the liner brush because it will stick because you thin the paint with just a little bit of oil. It will stick right over anything that you have up there. Now, the, the, the deal with that is uh, everything comes comes with a bit of a price. You have you have only one chance. You know, once you do it, you're done. You cannot go back and mess with it or it will become muddy instantly. You can't even look at it or it'll become muddy. Uh, yes. So that would be the only thing. Other than that, it will stick. So we'll just finish up here with the grass, though, and I will, I will then jump up to the rose bush. Now, without going too crazy, I'm going to add just a couple details, a couple of highlights here on this rose, which I actually did just change the shape of a moment ago, just slightly, just to make me kind of happy, you know? But anyway, that's not the point. The point is we got a little accent highlight using the liner brush, and you can do this as much or as little or none, if that's what you want to. It doesn't really matter. And just really just trying to show you how to do it. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.